Hello everyone, Fox here, and this is it. It's time to finish up the Best and Worst Bases series with the Drucker County Bases. Let me know down in the comments section what kind of content you want to see. I'm probably going to move on to fifth skills after this, but who knows. What we're going to do in this particular video, though, is look at Drucker County, a little bit about the land, and then I'm going to organize the bases from worst to best. Remember, I have reviewed every one of the bases individually, so if one of these bases catches your eye, make sure you check out the corresponding review. The base order will consider both the obvious traits of the base, such as the facilities, any unique stuff that's built into it, as well as the more subjective stuff, such as where it's located on the map. Some of the bases may also share a tier, so there won't necessarily be seven rankings, even though there are seven bases. But let's get started first with the land of Drucker County itself, also known as the Plateau. So, Drucker County is a really rocky, craggy, mountainous desert. And with no doubt in my mind, I will tell you that it is the hardest region to play in because of the inconvenience of terrain obstructions. It takes drastically more effort to drive around in this map. You'll constantly have to go around obstacles. You'll find yourself just sticking to the road more often than not, unless you learn some of the hidden passageways through the mountains. I personally don't really care for Drucker County because I just hate driving around so much in it. So the bases that tend to be located in the middle of the map are definitely going to be bumped up in the review. Well, let's go ahead and get started with... Number six, Knight's Family Drive-In. What? The lowest ranked one is not the starting home? And to make matters worse, it's actually a six-man base. And you know what? I am so sorry to have to put Knight's Family Drive-In at this spot because I actually think the base is pretty cool. But oh my god, it has the worst location on the map located far to the southeast. It is far, far away from civilization, from all of the other bases, really from everything. It's pretty much out in the middle of nowhere. What's unfortunate is that it has a really cool appearance with the whole castle theme, and it has a very unique built-in, the drive-in theater. No other base has anything like this. It functions as basically a super lounge with massive, just absolutely massive morale bonuses, amongst other things such as training up the EXP of your various survivors. That said, it is just not enough to overcome the disadvantage of living in such a remote location on a very difficult, rugged map. Better luck next time, Knight's Family Drive-In. It's time to move on, though, to... Number five, Wheelhouse Truck Stop. What? Once again, it's not the starting home? Wheelhouse Truck Stop is a five-man base, and it is located to the westmost part of Drucker County, but despite that, it's still close to civilization, unlike Knight's Family Drive-In. The reason it gets the second worst rating is because of just the wasted built-ins that really cramp your facility building options. You get the fuel tank, which gives you plus 100 fuel storage, which is just super overkill. And then you get the auto shop. The auto shop allows you to build armor kits for your vehicles, which sounds cool, except you need an auto mechanic to build those upgrades. And you would need an auto mechanic to build an auto shop in the first place. So it's not like you can really take advantage of the auto shop as a standalone built-in without an auto mechanic. It really makes you go, hmm. What this does, though, is leave you with the effective facility space of a four-man base. And that's why it sucks. But it's time to move on to... Number four, the Vogel House and the Cabin Park Motel. At last, the starting home makes its appearance. So how can I justify the starting home, the Vogel House, as basically the median of these ratings? Well, I asked myself if the Vogel House is what I start in, would I move into this base willingly? If the answer is no, 
it's below the Vogelhaus in value. Now, sure, the Vogelhaus is super basic. It's got no customizable large facilities and only three small facilities, but you know what it does have? That's six built-in beds. And it's located right in the middle of the map, so you can just stay here and build up your community and jump directly into a better base and ignore those lower-rated bases altogether. So that's actually a pretty good use for the Vogelhaus. What about the Cabin Park Motel? This is a five-man base, and it has decent customization options, but it has a not-so-great location. But at least you get two large facilities. The main problem with this is there is a large mountain range right to the side of it, and you're forced to drive around it anytime you want to move to the west of the map. But it's honestly still a workable base, hence the medium rating. It's time to get into the over-average bases, though, with... Number three, Wally's Bar and Grill. Amazing that a four-man base gets such a high rating, but here it is. This base is actually not bad. It's got one large and four small facilities open to you, which basically makes it equal to the wheelhouse truck stop for half the price. But you also get some free beds built into the kitchen. But what really gets it going is the fact that it's got a central location on the map, making it very easy to launch missions. And I definitely recommend this base as sort of a stopgap solution, meaning if you're not able to jump into one of the biggest and best bases, just spend the 500 influence to live in a nice upgrade from the Vogel house without getting a bad map location. But now it's on to the second best base, which is... Number two, Mike's Concrete. This is a six-man base with an off-centered location, but it is situated on a major road that feeds through most of Drucker County, and you will be driving on roads a lot more often in this region. It offers superior customization options to any of the other bases thus far. And while it has a lot of wasted facilities, you've got the power generator that you wouldn't need if you've got the builder legacy, and you've got another 100 storage fuel tank, which you also don't need. But it still just blows everything out of the water thus far. Whether you should move into this base entirely depends on whether or not you've got the community members to get into the largest base. You could just stay in Wally's Bar and Grill. It's a perfectly good idea. But if you're not anywhere close to the eight men needed to get into the largest base, yeah, you might consider going into Mike's Concrete for the expansion in building options. But enough foreplay. It's time to get down to business with... Number one, the Barricaded Strip Mall, the biggest and best base in Drucker County. This is the northmost located base, but just like Mike's Concrete, it is situated right next to a road that flows right into the heart of the map. The strip mall has humongous customization options with three large facilities and four small facilities, as well as numerous built-ins. However, not all is perfect with this base. There are two real main problems with the barricaded strip mall, and the first one is the questionable value of the built-ins. Many of these you'll probably wish you could tear out, but you can't. The kitchen, for example, loses a great deal of value if none of your community members know how to cook. Whereas the dojo can lose most of its value if all of your character's EXP is maxed out. Lastly, you can't see the full potential of the latrine without someone who has knowledge of utilities, and also the latrine is just not one of the really powerful built-in facilities. Completely eclipsed by the Red Talon Officer's Quarters, which has a latrine built into its own facility. And this can lead to the strip mall feeling a bit constrained in your freedom to make the base your own, because you're stuck with these built-ins that you can't tear down. The other issue with the strip mall is the question of sustainability. By that I mean, how are you going to juggle all of the base's needs? What are you going to do for the beds, and what are you going to do for the inevitable mass loss of materials, probably minus five to minus six per day? If you choose to resolve this using one of your large facilities and your outposts, meaning you either are a warlord leader and you build a Spartan barracks to get the eight beds, or you build a staging area to eliminate the material upkeep, well then your base is just going to be a worse version of the container fort, because 
It has six open small facilities and two large facilities while simultaneously just giving you eight beds for free, resolving the issue for you, and also giving you insane small facility options. Now, it's not wrong to create this base as a worse container for it, but it just means you're not really getting the uniqueness of three large facilities. Another option would be to just say, ah, to hell with it. I'm just going to have to deal with the minus five to minus six materials per day. That's a completely valid strategy if you don't mind keeping up with it. The last thing you could try is maybe a hybrid answer where you use some of the facilities that have built-in beds like the lounge or the Red Talon officer's quarters or you use something like a Red Talon bunk room which has a lot of beds for a small facility and then use your outpost to get the material cost as low as you can. But once again, the barricaded strip mall is going to push back against this idea by clogging up your small facility options with questionable built-ins. That's the main dilemma of the barricaded strip mall. It doesn't stop it from being the best base in the region, though. So let's recap, and I'll give you my recommendations. Drucker County, this super mountainous pain to drive around in, I recommend skipping most of the bases. It's going to start you in the Vogel House, and I'm going to recommend you skip all of the bases, and here are the only ones to consider. Wally's Bar and Grill. It doesn't cost much to move in. It's not far away. It's in the middle of the map, and you get a good upgrade to your customization options. Mike's Concrete is another option. Personally, I would stay in Wally's Bar and Grill and continue building up so you can just move directly into the barricaded strip mall. But Mike's Concrete is still a plenty serviceable base. Lastly, if you want to live in Drucker County, then you're going to want to live in the barricaded strip mall. But this is the real issue for me. It's not really a question of whether or not the barricaded strip mall is good or not. It's a question of whether or not it's worth it to live in Drucker County in the first place. Maybe if you like the added challenge of driving around, it's valuable. But I just cannot stand living in this region. And there's not a single base here that I think is good enough to withstand the frustration of driving around Drucker County. I also think the bases of the other two regions are better. I think the container fort is better than any of the bases in Drucker County. And I think that Squell Owns Brewery is better than any of the bases in Drucker County. And both of those regions are easier to drive around in. So I guess what I'm saying is I just don't recommend Drucker County at all. But if you want to explore the full game, you want to see what Drucker County is about, I think that is worth it. Well, you've got this video and my other video guides to cover it. At any rate, that is going to conclude the best and worst bases of Drucker County. Like this video if it was helpful or entertaining. Subscribe to my channel for future State of K2 content. Remember to leave a comment telling me what kind of videos you want to see. And of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.